next up, uh, we have Sunny Agarwal, the co-founder of Osmosis, and he will take a look at one year retrospective of the Terra Supernova. Please welcome Sunny. Hello, stage is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Uh, today, I'm going to be giving a talk on a one-year Terra retrospective. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, my name is Sunny. I work on a project called Osmosis. It's a DEX on Cosmos. If you don't know what it is, I don't know what you're doing here. Um, <laughs> but you know, last year uh, at Gateway, I actually failed to give a talk uh, because it was like literally I was dealing like in the hacker room just dealing with the Terra crash and like you know we had to go fork the Terra chain twice to like prevent a staking attack and fix osmosis and stuff. So just did a live AMA and you know got a chance to talk a little bit then about like you know it had just happened that week and like okay what how is Cosmos going to develop uh, post Terra. And now I think it's like, you know, I want to, now that we're like exactly, almost exactly one year later, I think it's a good time to like kind of look back and see like, okay, how has Terra impacted both the Cosmos ecosystem, but also like crypto as a whole. So I actually originally wrote this uh, as a blog post six months ago in order to, and it was called the six month uh, retrospective and I was like all ready to go to post it and like was you know ready to go and I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those darn kids um, <laughs> and so you know the, the, the I don't think my blog post would have gotten into many eyeballs that week so I just ended up just like pocketing it and never publishing it um, and but, you know the thing with FTX is like we are building DeFi where you know, if you've been in the space long enough, you are used to this. Like, this happens every couple of years. You have Mount Gox, you have Quadriga. FT obviously, FTX is of, like, a massively different scale. Uh, but, like, you know, we know the solutions here. We're, you know, this is literally what we're trying to fix is move away from these, like, centralized entities. I think the analysis of what happened to Terra is a lot more interesting, right? Like, Terra was not this, like, centralized exchange. It wasn't this, like, CFI thing. It was actually a DeFi protocol um, and, you know, something that I'm sure a lot of us in this room, like, probably, like, heavily bought into, like, not just, like, financially, but, like, you know, truly believed in it, right, for a while. And so that's why I, I want to, like, go and, you know, let's, let's, let's retrospect on this. So we're going to start with, like, what was Terra, how did Terra uh, relationship with Cosmos both before and after the crash, right? So... You know, Terra always had this, like, sort of weird, tenuous relationship with Cosmos. Sometimes they like to pretend, you know, sometimes they would, like, be like, oh, we're not a Cosmos chain. We're, like, doing our own thing off on the side. But then sometimes you had this guy, like, screaming, Cosmos, at this event. I don't know if, does, can anyone find the video of this? I swear there's a video of him doing it, but I searched YouTube for, like, an hour, and I couldn't find it. So if anyone still has that video, let me know. Um, but, you know, we had this, you know, we predicted that, like, hey, you know, what UST was going to come into Cosmos and like bring this like sudden rush of liquidity, and you know, we were right about that. It did, and like on Osmosis, UST like peaked at like over a quarter of a billion dollars of liquidity. Luna as well, you know, almost uh, 175 million dollars of liquidity. It, it brought in this like massive flood of liquidity, which like led to this huge boom in Cosmos TVL, Cosmos asset prices. Um, but then we kind of forgot what happens when a wave actually does hit. It kind of actually destroys everything in the process. Um, and, you know, there was... So one thing I want to talk about is, like, there was this narrative that was happening, I think, in especially within a lot of the Ethereum community, that, like, oh, these Cosmos people were, like, dummies for letting this happen, right? Like, how did you let this thing happen? And, you know, I think part of the story here is that, like, UST was the only stable coin that was available in Cosmos, right? There was no other IBC, like, enabled stable coin at the time. There was no in-production bridges at the time. And so, obviously, being the thing that was available, that's what got the traction. But I... It's also worth noting that, like, you know, we weren't the only ones that fell for this, right? Like, so not, not to excuse us, but, like, you know, 
UST was being exported everywhere throughout crypto. It was about to enter Solana in a very big way. It was like becoming the primary stable coin in the Avalanche ecosystem. Avax itself was gonna be like built like collateral in the Terra protocol. And you know, as I like to uh, remind people, the Ethereans, like UST was about to become the main stable coin in the curve pools as well. It was literally like a week, weeks away from happening before the DPEG happened. So like part of this whole narrative of like, okay, how did UST become so big in Cosmos? It just happened to be that it was, it got big in Cosmos first because we were the closest to UST. I, IBC made it the easiest for UST to come in and uh, dominate in Cosmos, but it was very close to like, taking on a very similar role in throughout the crypto ecosystem. But, you know, unfortunately, that hurt us pretty bad. Uh, all that liquidity went crashing away. All that uh, sort of value and uh, capital that, that, like, you know, $60 billion poofed in thin air. Um, but one thing I also like, you know, to point out is, like, yes, the capital and liquidity, you know, this, like, paper money liquidity uh, disappeared. But the users stayed, right? Like, if you look at, uh, this is for Osmosis specifically, but, you know, obviously we had a fall off after the USD crash, but, like, it's actually stayed relatively stable. Uh, this is, like, our weekly active users, and it's actually stayed relatively stable, and a lot of the users that came in initially from the Terra ecosystem ended up staying in the Cosmos. Like, you know, it's honestly thanks to a lot of the work from people like Danku and, you know, Sefi and all these, like, people within the Terra ecosystem who were really trying to, like, expose the lunatics to the wider Cosmos ecosystem. And today you see that where it's like, you know, even today you see on Twitter people still have the um, moon emojis and stuff in their, in their uh, Twitter bios. Um, and so this is like why I like to call, so that's why the original, my original post was called, titled the Terra Supernova, where, you know, Terra likes to, you know, it uses this analogy of, the, the planet and the moon and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I actually, I think like a better astrologic, astronomical analogy is a supernova, right? Terra was this, you know, star, became so big, it attracted all the mass, and at some point it just explodes and sends the stardust throughout the cosmos, including the users, but also a, all the developers and projects, right? So, you know, this was thanks to a lot of the work from like, you know, uh, our team uh, helped like with like uh, the Osmosis Grants program helped. A lot of these teams had lost all of their funding. It was all in UST. You know, the Osmosis Grants program came in, stepped in and helped provide funding to a lot of these teams. The Juno Grants program helped provide funding to a lot of these teams. Like, I, I think part of what happened was like a lot of the rest of, uh, you know, I think Cosmos got wrecked just as hard as a lot of the Terra projects as well. And there was this like shared suffering that we had together. And it's not the best way to build community, but it is a way to build community. And it, and it really did work. And so, you know, I just want to like, I, I think maybe people don't realize how many of the projects that you just like accept as Cosmos projects today actually came from Terra. Like I just want to like go through some of them, right? Like obviously you have Mars, one, one of the biggest lending protocols on, on Terra, Skip, started off as building MEV solutions for Terra. Cato was a uh, fiat on-ramp originally for UST. Um, IBCX was built uh, by the original anchor team. Uh, they're called, they left, created a new company called AlphaWorks, built the IBC index. Uh, Levana is a perps protocol launching on Osmosis pretty soon, so uh, similar to GMX style. Uh, Astroport is building liquidity vaults on Osmosis, Injective, uh, Neutron, a bunch of other Cosmos chains. Uh, Margin, another perps protocol. CDT is this uh, stable coin that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, the Apollo DAO, you know, they've built uh, the multi-sig tooling that is a uh, lifesaver, because otherwise it's really annoying to use the Cosmos SDK multi-sigs. Um, TFM, they have some really cool, you should check it out, it's actually probably one of like the best trading interfaces for Osmosis. Like you actually have charts and everything there. Uh, very nice to use. You have a nice NFT aggregator. Uh, Coin Hall, also really great. Um, you know, you have projects like Prism. They're launching a Cosmos SDK chain pretty soon. Zodiac is uh, launching on Osmosis pretty soon. Uh, Leap Wallet, if any of you have used it, it's like an amazing wallet, check it out. Um, they, uh, you know, originally started on Terra. Now 
are one of the biggest uh, Cosmos multi-chain wallets. You have Loop, White Whale, Eclipse, which uh, Yaz just mentioned in his previous one, in his previous talk. They're building, you know, a framework to build rollups on top of Cosmos. Um, you have Obi, which is building Osmosis smart accounts and you know generalized account abstraction based wallets. Uh, you have uh, even like some of the most popular NFT projects from you know I'm sure everyone's seen the Hero NFTs that were you know all throughout Terra. They're, they're, they're launching on they're, they're on Stargaze. Uh, you also have developer tools like Beaker. Beaker was uh, you know if anyone was familiar with Terraform, it was like the developer toolkit that people used to use in Terra. Uh, well, Beaker was like, you know, we, the, the developer who built that came over to the Osmosis team and we've built Beaker, which is a framework, it's like the hard hat or foundry for Cosmosm, and it's a way for anyone to like easily build uh, Cosmosm apps. You have Abstract, which is also, you know, built by some ex-white whale people, but you can basically easily build, uh, it's almost like an open Zeppelin for, uh, for Cosmosm. Uh, you have Celatone, uh, built by the X-Prism team. It's sort of the best uh, block explorer and remix style application for actually interacting with Cosmwasm applications. Um, and uh, just this week, chain, uh, Terascope, which is one of the most popular explorers that everyone loved, uh, rebranded to Chainscope, and now they support Osmosis, and I'm sure they'll uh, start supporting more uh, Cosmos chains pretty soon. Um, and then you even have like uh, Terraform Labs also contributing tooling as well. Like, you know, they've made their popular Terra Station wallet be a multi-chain Cosmos wallet. Uh, they're building these, this Alliance thing, which is a interesting security model. I think it has some issues. I think they should come work with us on mesh security, but uh, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's, so, you know it, it's nice to see that they're actually contributing to uh, you know, security models throughout Cosmos. And I will, you know, before I get raged at in the comments, yes, of course, Kujira. You know, uh, I don't know why people ha think I have some issue with Kujira. Anyone who try, one thing I've learned from Jay is anytime someone's this unnecessary drama happening, like there's probably like something like someone's trying to seed it for no reason, right? Like, uh, I, I I really love what the Kujira team has been building. They've built one of like the best order book interfaces, one of the best staking API interfaces. They are, you know, one of the, you know really good UI around the USK uh, stablecoin, and I'm just, you know, I think they've done a really good job at bringing the Terra community uh, back, like, you know, vibes into Cosmos, which is cool. Um, so yeah, you know, Cosmos, we have this stardust throughout Cosmos. Obviously, we do have this um, challenge in front of us, which is, you know, how do we start, eventually the stardust has to start to build new stars again, right? And so we'll talk about that a little bit later, and we also have a panel later this, uh, uh, in the Neutron Hacker Lounge about like where is Cosmos gonna be looking a year from now. So come check that out to like figure out, okay, now with all this Stardust, where does Cosmos go from here for the next one year? Now I wanna like step back and focus away from Cosmos for a second and talk about what impact did Terra have on crypto as a whole. So um, as many of you I'm sure I got into crypto because of Bitcoin. I wanted to build the digital digital money, right? Uh, turns out Bitcoin, it doesn't actually serve that great of a function as digital money. It's really more of like digital gold and there's a reason the gold standard fell apart. Um, you know, I, I, I always show this class but I, I, I really highly recommend it. It's called the economics of money and banking. Uh, it's on Coursera for free. Uh, I took it originally because I was like, oh, you know, you gotta understand the banks, know your enemy to take them down, and I took it and I came out with like, damn, fiat currency is actually really brilliant. Um, but it, it has a very like interesting property, which is like, you know, in any monetary system, you're balancing these two things, discipline and elasticity. Discipline is, you know, how rigid the monetary supply is, while, which, you know, you don't want and, and you, you need discipline in a system. You don't want to enter hyperinflationary systems. But you also need elasticity, right? You need, and what, what elasticity basically means is, you know, money is a market, it, it, or it's an asset, it has a price. And what happens is, as the demand for money changes, you want the price to remain relatively stable. So elasticity is basically how you build it into a market that the supply can be reactive the changes in demand. As the demand for money increases, you want 
the supply of money to increase, right? And this is like the fundamental problem with why Bitcoin and ETH and all of these things will never be a true medium of exchange, unit of account. You're never going to denominate uh, long-term debts in this because it's not stable, right? And we really do need to build actual stable digital fiat, algorithmic fiat currencies, f current digital currencies who have these feedback cycles. And Terra was one of the first that actually tried to build such a mechanism. Was it the best design for a mechanism? In retrospect, obviously no. But like it was one of, you know, one of the few that was actually innovating and like experimenting with this idea of, hey, su uh, algorithmic supply, supply that uh, reacts to changes in demand. And, you know, when, I remember when uh, the Terra team originally came to our office, like it, the Tenderman office back in like 2019 or something, like we were, I, was, I was skeptical of the stablecoin design. It was like, oh, uh, where's the collateral? But there, but Doe had like one, an interesting point. He, his point was, it doesn't matter as much. You know, fiat currencies also don't have collateral. Fiat currencies remain stable because they have real economies behind them that are driving real demand, right? Fiat, you know, holds its value because there's a set of real users that, that have this constant demand pressure on it. And, you know, this is actually a really good post uh, from, like, you know, back in, like, 2018 where he talked about this, like, how do you build economies that bootstrap demand how is that, you know, build seniorage systems, tax systems within the Terra system that is gonna keep the thing stable. And the thing is, they actually started to like build this, right? They had this whole chai thing going on. Now, obviously, in retrospect, it's unclear how real any of that was, but, you know, it, it was at least like, you know, it, it felt real that like, oh, the, the thesis at least seemed to make sense of like, hey, let's build real payment systems, let's have companies actually using this in their cash flows. And then they also started building these, like, an entire DeFi economy around this, right? You have Mirror, which was driving a lot of demand for UST being used. Uh, you had this ecosystem of DeFi applications being built on top of Terra. And, you know, you had UST starting to be used throughout the entire crypto ecosystem, exported out of Terra and Cosmos. And things seemed to be working, right? It was, you know, there was growth. And then came the scam, the, the, the anchor money machine, the magic money machine, right? And anytime there's a magic money machine, you should be skeptical. And, you know, the problem was you had these insane 20% APYs, which are obviously unsustainable, right? Like there was no actual way for these 20% APYs to be uh, coming from anywhere. Where they were coming from was, you know, inflation of... Luna and of the anchor token and being basically being used to subsidize uh, the, the, the project. But what this did was it changed it from organic demand to majority of UST was there for inorganic reasons, right? They weren't actually being used in payments or in actual DeFi protocols. So it was all just sitting there for this like yield farming uh, purpose, which is the exact thing that Terra wanted to set out to not do. They wanted to build a real economy, not yield farming Ponzi schemes, right? And, you know, and you had this, like, it, it just, like, exacerbated from there, right? You had, like, Abracadabra with the DGen box, like, levering up. You had, like, Y Combinator companies, like, telling consumers to, like, put their money into UST and get this, like, safe 20% yield. A lot of the DeFi applications on top of Terra shifted from building real products to just basically building anchor vaults. Um, and you also had this like nefarious situation almost where you had something like Mars, which was a real lending product on top of Terra, but it couldn't compete with the 20% yield that was uh, being issued by anchor, right? And this is like, not only now do you have like a lot of inorganic demand coming for Anchor, but you've also started vampiring the, all the organic demand for your stablecoin that was actually being built by these real products. And this is like where everything went wrong, right? Because when, as soon as things got a little bit shaky, right? This is from the uh, jumps analysis of uh, the DPEG, like everyone went running for the door, right? And so this like obviously 
obviously, right? Like, what are the lessons we learned here? Like, people want to be like, oh, we shouldn't be building algo stables. Algo stables are fundamentally broken. Um, you know, no, what we really learned was algo stables propped up by Ponzi's don't work. But it's like, no shit. Like, of course not. <laughs> like, and that's, the, that's what's like, to me, so upsetting about the whole thing is that they like set out to, with a hypothesis about an economic experiment they wanted to run, and then they got greedy and blew up their own experiment. And we didn't learn anything out of it, right? Like, I, you know, the whole beauty of crypto is like, we get to run these like crypto economic experiments and see how things work. But like, I don't know what, what were the lessons learned here other than this, right? Like, and it's sad because like, now everyone's too scared to build, to keep innovating on uh, algo stables. And, but you know, my take is the show must go on, right? Like we, if we don't keep innovating on decentralized money, like what is the entire point of this industry? You know, Bitcoin, the, it was meant to be the peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Like this whole DeFi thing is kind of dumb if we're all just like using centralized stable coins and like, might as well be using like you know centralized uh, like CBDCs on like bank ledgers, right? Like we we need to we shouldn't we shouldn't let the UST collapse. Let us lose sight of the goal, right? And you know, obviously yes, you know, centralized stable coins, great. We're gonna bring them into Cosmos. You know, USDC is coming to Cosmos, Tether is coming to Cosmos, um, but like we need to figure out how do we build like stable coins that aren't reliant on these centralized systems, right? And there are some experiments that are running right now in throughout crypto that I am excited about, I'm interested in, you know. Uh, th there is a secret underground group of people out there who are still experimenting with algo stables. They don't like to be known as much because, uh, you know, you get laughed out of the room when you tell people you're doing that. But like, you know, you have things like Spot and Beanstalk. I think they have some interesting ideas around Debt. I am not ad, uh, you know, advocating for them, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I think the experimentation and the research is important. Um, you have projects like, you know, doing stuff with partial collateralization. I like what Frax has done. You know, in a way, you could think about it, Terra was also moving towards a partial collateralization system. They were trying to build up these LFG reserves, but it kind of, too little, too late, you know? Um, you had, you have projects working with floating rate exchange currencies, right? You have, I really like the stuff that the Rye uh, team has done. And like, long term, if you, even in the traditional world, we know pegged currencies don't work, right? Like, you had the infamous Bank of England uh, peg break, right? Like, you can, it's very hard to hard peg currencies, which is why today we've moved towards a world of like, free floating currencies. And if we wanna build the, a digital native fiat currency, we can't expect to be pegged to the dollar, but we need to, we, what we wanna do is be stable relative to some notion of value, right? And the Rye team has, and, you know, I, even Terra knew this, right? Their goal, they, people might not remember, they didn't start with a USD stable coin, right? They started with SDR and then, you know, to bootstrap the demand, they ended up having to shift towards a US dollar stable coin, but the point was always to shift towards a, away from the US dollar peg towards a more free floating exchange rate. And I think that the, what, what's happening with Rye is really interesting that you can actually see that despite being a floating rate currency, it's actually more closely uh, followed the US dollar than most other, uh, on average, most other like major world currencies, which is a very, uh, you know, in heartening uh, uh, outcome from, from what's happening with Rye. Um, you also, you know, I also like the stuff that Liquity is doing with like direct redemptions uh, as a way of like avoiding the need for the PSM and that, you know, build, build, avoiding the PSM style systems that you need in Maker and whatnot. So within Cosmos, uh, it's nice that we are actually running a number of stablecoin experiments. Uh, we have IST from the Agoric team, they're, they're launching the vaults pretty soon. You have the Comdex, you have USK from the Kajira team, you have Silk. Um, you know, we have all of these stablecoin uh, experiments running right now, which I'm excited for. Uh, one that I want to like highlight, which uh, is, is, one, is called Membrane. Membrane is a project building on top of Osmosis right now. 
uh, and they have a, you know, they take a lot of these ideas from these experiments being done and are building them into one product, right? So they are using a floating peg similar to Rye. They take this like liquidation queue system similar to USK along with a stability pool uh, similar to uh, liquidity. So, you know, you have this like multiple tiered system of like how uh, liquidations work. By the way, if anyone doesn't follow tricks on Twitter or definitely follow him. I, every year I do this like analysis of who did, whose tweets did I like the most that year. And I think in 2022, Trix was my like number one or number two. So massively underrated account, follow him. Um, but then, you know, direct collateral redemptions, you'll, it'll be pluggable into Mars credit accounts. Uh, one key that they're really focused on is no centralized stablecoin collateral, right? We want this thing to be a fully decentralized thing, no PSM. Um, and then one of the cool things they've been working on is this idea of asset bundles, where it's like a truly multi-collateral CDP. So, you know, even in things like Maker, uh, multi-collateral DAI, you still, you have multiple CDP vaults, but they're all uh, isolated, right? With uh, the way that uh, Membrane is working, you can have multiple collateral types in a single vault. So even if, the, as long as they're, if they're uncorrelated assets, you know, you, you don't, they don't have separate liquidation points. They, you get one liquidation point for all your collateral in a single vault, which is uh, really cool. Um, I'm gonna shift gears really quick to talk about Bitcoin for a second. This, is, this will uh, feel a little bit off, but like, you know, it'll, it'll come back together, I promise. Um, Bitcoin-centric Cosmos, right? I, I, I've talked about this for a long time, and I've, you know, you may have seen this tweet before. It's like, Cosmos will save Bitcoin. But I think this is still true, but I think there's also an extent to which, right now, I, if we want to save, Bitcoin will also help save Cosmos. Today, I think one of the biggest issues within the entire Cosmos ecosystem is a massive, and, and just throughout crypto, other than Ethereum, is a massive lack of capital and liquidity, right? Like, and and the, the, a large reason for this is that ETH is this asset, this like moneyness asset that has this giant market cap. And through that, it's been able to fund this like huge DeFi ecosystem, $27 billion of TVL in the DeFi uh, ecosystem, Ethereum DeFi ecosystem that doesn't even include the L2s. Meanwhile, but you know, in Cosmos, we don't have any asset like ETH that has this level of moneyness and uh, high store value. But there is an asset out there, Bitcoin, that has a higher market cap and more value than ETH and a fledgling DeFi ecosystem because you can't build anything on top of it right now, right? And I think this is like, you know, ETH has, Ethereum has the money and the ecosystem. I think that, you know, my call to action for Cosmos is we need to really lean into Bitcoin. Bitcoin has the money, no ecosystem. Cosmos has an amazing ecosystem, but no, no like strong base money. And this is where these things can mix. You know, Bitcoin will be the, Bitcoin the blockchain will just be the asset issuance chain. It is an app chain. And then the Bitcoin the asset will, should flow throughout Cosmos and be the base store value asset for the rest of the ecosystem. And you know, there's been this like resurgence in excitement around Bitcoin, obviously dr driven partially through ordinals. Now you have all these things like BRC20 tokens, and you know I think UD is doing a great job at like saving Bitcoin culture right now, and like making Bitcoin be this like fun, exciting thing. Uh, and I think there's really an opportunity right now for like to really push changes in the Bitcoin protocol. But now you know you have all these ordinals and stuff happening and whatnot. And this is how they're being traded, literally via spreadsheet. It's like absurd because Bitcoin still doesn't have the programmability right now. And so this is why, you know, I call on the Cosmos community. I'm, you know, I'm working with the uh, Axlar team, the Babylon team to build all these like decentralized bridges to Bitcoin so we can bring Bitcoin into the Cosmos and ha do more things with it. Um, and so, you know, we're working on all these decentralized bridges right now. But in the meanwhile, you know, to kickstart this process, uh, we've been working very closely with BitGo to bring native WBTC to Cosmos. And so we'll be able to, you know, it'll be their third deployment of WBTC after Ethereum and Tron. But basically, you know, WBTC, one of the most trusted assets in 
the DeFi ecosystem. It's used as collateral in Maker, Compound, Aave, everywhere, right? And by bringing this WBTC, it'll be this initial asset that we can start to use uh, while we wait for the truly decentralized Bitcoin bridges to come live. Um, and as part of this, we're working with the membrane team to build BitDollar, which is going to be a purely Bitcoin-backed uh, uh, stablecoin. So, you know, Terra had the right idea, right? They were collateral. They were building up collateral for UST with Bitcoin, and I, I think that was truly the right idea. And what we're going to do is, you know, using the membrane multi-vault system. We'll be able to support, you know, starting with WBTC as the first collateral type, but start to include the many different Bitcoin varieties throughout Cosmos as collateral types, such as, you know, Axelar's Bridge, Nomics, uh, Wormholes working with TBTC, so that will come over soon. Uh, and eventually, you know, we want the end goal of Bitcoin bridges as a drive chains, and you know, that that's probably a while away, but we'll be able to. Uh, build this, you know, I think it's the first experiment, you know, let's start this experiment of bringing Bitcoin in and issuing a stable coin using it. Uh, I am way over time, so thank you guys. Um, so let's see what we can do with this, make the best out of this supernova. Thank you.